الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد as muslims it's imperative for us to recognize scholarship recognize authentic scholarship and to know and understand who we take our knowledge from. And we ask Allah the Almighty for sincerity and for firmness upon the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. And we ask Allah the Almighty for forgiveness for our sins. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the Muslims everywhere and protect the Muslims everywhere from misguidance. I wanted to give some observations on the individual known as Imran Hussein. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide him. He is a individual who calls and propagates his understanding of Islam his methodology of Islam as he mentioned and I'm going to give you some exact quotes of what this individual has said and we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses this to be a source of guidance and not misguidance and may Allah bless us to do this strictly for his sake and forgive us of our sins and let it be a source of guidance for us and him and the Muslims everywhere. So Imran Hussein said and I only listened to him for maybe five minutes and I heard all of these mistakes, which was just sufficient for me to not even go any further. And really, the Prophet Wasallam said, Adin al nasiha He said, the religion is sincerity, and it's based on advice. We have to advise one another. And this is an obligation to share this about Brother Imran Hussein, who, unfortunately, many of the youth believe and follow this man as a scholar but I'm going to point out some very important issues and I hope that it can be something to shake the hearts up and wake the hearts up to that which is Islam so Imran Hussein said scholars of Islam are out of touch and this in and of itself is a slander against the scholars in Islam those people who adhere, who have devoted their lives to studying the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and who Allah, the Almighty, who is above His creation, has created them and favored them above all of His servants, but then they're out of touch, but perhaps Imran Hussein is in touch. Because the scholars of Islam, Allah says about them, in Al-Akhshar Ibadi, Al-ulama, that the most God-fearing people are the scholars. Allah said it, the one who created you and I and created the scholars. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said, kuntum la ta'lamun. Allah also advised us, ordered us, in fact, to ask the people of knowledge if you do not know. So how is it someone like Imran Hussein, after 1400 years of this verse being revealed, and in fact the ver verse has been written in Allah al-Mahfuz by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and earth, the Qur'an is his speech, he said, ask the people of knowledge if you do not know. But Imran Hussein says, the scholars of Islam are out of touch. So then he began to speak about currencies, and the political uh, uh, situation, the world economic crisis, the situation of America and the UN, and all of these things. So I don't know what kind of Islam you'll gain from that, but those people who listen, maybe they can share this with us. Then he said, and after speaking about what he prophesizes as some the, the, the possibility of war with Iran and the implications and the, all of these things are for political economists and for policy uh, advocates and so forth. But Imran Hussein is giving us an Islamic twist, allegedly. 
He says, these wars will, in my opinion, bring about transfer of powers in the world. Okay, we don't have problems with this political speculation. But let's see when he has the nerve to speak about Islam. This is what is shameful. He said, that's the failure of Islamic scholarship. This is another, another quote of his. He said, that's the failure of Islamic scholarship today. And then he began to speak about what he calls the knowledge of the day of judgment, ilm al akhira or whatever he calls it, a new type of knowledge that I, I imagine that he and others like him have only been blessed with this knowledge, that the scholars of Islam, that the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who preceded him, those great imams like Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi'i, Imam Ahmed, they didn't have this knowledge, but Imran Hussein was blessed with this knowledge. Neither did the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in. They didn't have this knowledge because Imran Hussein allegedly can speak about this knowledge. He said that's the failure of Islamic scholarship, and we already talked about that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserves the scholars, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to go back to the scholars. So how is it that, the, that scholarship, Islamic scholarship has failed? Or that there is a failure of Islamic scholarship today. Doesn't, doesn't, Allah, doesn't the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, let us know that scholarship will continue on? At least up until the last uh, day, uh, to the, to the, as one of the signs of the Day of Judgment. Doesn't our Prophet والسلام, say, The Prophet والسلام, said, There won't cease letting snow continue. There won't cease to be a group from my nation that will continue to be on the truth until, until the Day of Judgment. And in another narration, he said, even if the people uh, The Prophet said, no one will harm them, even if they differ with them, until the Day of Judgment. And what do the people, the classical scholars, what do they say about this? Like uh, in Ibn Hajar, in his explanation of this hadith, in the explanation of Sahih Bukhari, which is one of the most well-known, is the most well-known and authentic uh, source for the explanation of Bukhari. Imam, uh, what did those great imams say? They said, going back to the statements of the Salaf of this Ummah, that this refers to Ahl hadith the people of the Sunnah, Ahl Sunnah, Ahl hadith the people who spent their scholarship, used their time in preserving the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the sciences of hadith and the sciences of jarwa ta'dil of criticizing individuals who had false uh, uh, hadith and knowing the authenticity of the individual so we could determine the authenticity of the ahadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is who this is referring to, letting us know that scholarship in Islam will continue no matter what some of these individuals say. Then he said, an incapacity to use the Quran and the hadith of the Nabi Alayhi Salatu Wasallam to understand the reality that confronts us today. Again, another slander against the scholars, as if they don't have any idea about what's going on in the Ummah today. Who are you going to go to to help you practice your religion? Are you going to go to the ignorant people and the people who get you excited? The people who tell you to revolt? The people who tell you to speculate about the explanation of the Qur'an? The people who are going to give you new explanations that no one in the Ummah came up with before them? Is this who you're going to trust for your knowledge? I say, Taqillah, ya, those people who, who listen to this individual... Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fear him as he shall be feared and stay away from that which will take you away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and come back to the Quran and the Sunnah. Then what did he say? He made clear that he is not from Ahl Sunnah. He basically, it's as if he planted a flag saying, I am not from Ahl Sunnah. Please bear this flag letting you know I have deviated from Islam. The Islamic, not Islam meaning he's not a Muslim, but Islamic uh, the Kitab wa Sunnah, the Quran and the Sunnah, the authentic guidance. Here's what he said. He said, it's a question of methodology. Nam, you're right. 
It is a question of methodology. I'm sorry to start on such a difficult note. And then he went on to say, we have a movement called Salafis. And he said, and basically that they take, they believe that the religion is reduced to the text. Isn't that what Muhammad Ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us? Didn't he sallallahu rabbi wa sallamu alayhi say to us? Here's what Muhammad Ibn Abdullah, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what he said regarding the text. Imran Hussein believes that the religion should not be reduced to just the text, the understanding of the text and literal meanings of the text. But Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inni qad taraktu fikum shay'in lan tudillu ba'duha ba'dihima kitab Allah wa sunnati. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Verily I have left two things for you, and no one will be misguided after them. And that's the Qur'an and my sunnah. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in another hadith, Taraktum تَرَقْتُكُمْ عَلَى مِثْلَ بَيْضَى لَيْلَهَا كَنَّهَارِهَا لَا يُزِيغْ عَنْهَا إِلَّا حَالَكِ Then he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, I have left you on white, like clarity. It's night, it's like it's day, meaning it's always clear, in the day and the night. No one will be misguided from it except those who are destroyed, meaning those who don't follow the guidance of the Prophet ﷺ, do not understand the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, how the Sahaba understood it and how they exemplified it and their creed and preservation of it, then they, have, they will be destroyed. Why will they be destroyed? Because they will not be of the people who are saved as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. So taking the literal text is as the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een. They didn't make metaphors and analogies. And the great imams of the sunnah in the beginning of times up until now, Islamic scholarship prior to this day up until now, was based upon going back to those pristine sources, the Quran and the sunnah, and their literal meaning. This is what the imams were upon. They didn't try to explain things away, but rather they said, if the Prophet ﷺ said this, then we will accept it and do it as this. We don't speculate about uh, how, you know, making an analogy between that and something else of their relevant time. No, but instead they followed the Quran and the Sunnah and they understood it in that way, the literal meaning of the text. Unlike the methodology, as uh, Imran Hussein, he said, it's a question of methodology. And in fact, it is a question of methodology. His methodology is questionable. And the methodology we try to follow is that of the Quran and the Sunnah and the methodology of the Salaf of this Ummah, the pious predecessors, meaning the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, anu majma'een, and the Tabi'een, rahimahullah ta'ala, and the Itba'a Tabi'een, those who followed them. Why do we follow this instead of uh, a, a, a methodology of speculation and a methodology based on inferences and political uh, uh, analogies and political, uh, extra political insight and historical references and inferences? Why do we not take that methodology, but instead we take the methodology of the Salaf? The reason we take the methodology of the Salaf is because the Prophet Muhammad wasallam said, خَيْرَ النَّاسِ قَرْنِي ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يُنُونُهُمْ the Prophet ﷺ said, the best of the people is my generation, then those who follow them, then those who follow them. Letting us know that that was the complete scholarship, the complete preservation of Islam, the best understanding of Islam, the pristine values and creed and thick and understanding and jurisprudence of Islam was with those first three generations, as Muhammad ibn Abdullah said. Then... Imran Hussein said, and all of this I got within about within the first ten minutes of his lecture, without even going into it. And this, and and I just, I hope that Allah blesses us all with guidance to to avoid people like this who speak about the religion based upon their political inferences and based upon their speculation. So he said, again, he was criticizing the 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 Salafis, meaning those people who are adhering, who claim they adhere to the madhab of the Salaf of this Ummah. And some of them do, and some of them, some people take it as a name. He said, in regards to this, he said that the religion is reduced to text. We say, yes, the religion is reduced to text, because the Prophet Muhammad told us to go to the Quran and the Sunnah. And 
Then he said that though these texts must be understood and interpreted literally, once you hold that methodology, you will be waiting a long time for Dajjal's donkey. La ilaha illa and subhanaka ni kuntu min al mean This man should be cautious with his tongue. Then he said, those who hold a Protestant view of Islam insist he will come on a donkey. This is criminal. And that he would make a likeness between the Protestants and Ahl Sunnah. Because Ahl Sunnah has always the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, they are the origin of Ahl Sunnah. They understood those texts literally. They asked the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, for explanation and they followed it. They followed it. They didn't make an analogy. They didn't make inferences. But rather they followed and strove the best. And when we want to look at evidence in Islam, we don't look at speculation and inference as uh, Imran Hussein has, has invited us to this new methodology. But rather we look to the Quran and we look to the Sunnah, authentic Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, and we look to the Ijma, what the consensus of the scholars are, are upon. And we look to Qiyas, Qiyas as Sahih, you know, correct analogy, correct analogy based on the Quran and the Sunnah from the people of knowledge, not from anyone who just uh, travels around the world making speculations about the Dajjal in the UN. Let's mention very quickly what the Prophet ﷺ said in regards to individuals like this in general. And this is collected in Sunnah, uh, uh, Sunnah, the Imam Baghawi. Imam Baghawi collected this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ or related this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ in his book Shara Sunnah on Abi Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, Sayukunu fi akhira ummati unasim yuhadithunakum ma lam tasma'u antum wa la aba'akum fa iyaakum wa iyaahum. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said as was narrated or uh, uh, that was related by Abu Huraira, a hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu who said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there will be in the last part of my nation people who will speak about things that you never heard of, nor did your fathers hear of it. Beware of them and warn against them. This is such a beautiful and appropriate hadith. How many people... If you listen to this man's lectures, you'll find he speaks so in depth about, for example, the Dajjal, the Antichrist, and speaking about how it represents, how the dollar represents this, how the UN as a body represents, how the television represents this. How in the world can you speculate about these things, no matter if there contains evil in something or not? You have no right to speculate and make analogies, make uh, these inferences based on ignorance, not based on knowledge, based on your opinion and how you see the world system and try to make a relationship between that and the Sharia of Allah. This is Allah's deen. Do not speak about knowledge and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his religion without knowledge. That is one of the major sins. And this sums up the methodology that uh, Mr. Hussein gave us. An Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, and the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tila hadihi ayat. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he read this ayat. This is in Ali Imran. Qal, a'udhu billah min shaytan rajim, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, huwa alladhi anzala alayka al-kitab minhu ayatun muhkamatun hunnu um al-kitab, wa ukhra mutashabihad, fama alladhina fi qulubihim zaygun fi yattabi'una ma tashabaha minhu ibtigal fitnati wa ibtigal ta'wil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah uh, Ali Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, It is he who has sent down to you the book. In it are verses that are entirely clear. They are the foundations of the book, meaning the verses of the ahkam, of the commandments, and those sharia rulings and the obligatory duties. And the punishment. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and others not, uh, and others that are ambiguous, meaning that they may have more than one meaning. They might not be entirely clear in their apparent meaning. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so as for those in whose hearts 
there is a deviation from the truth, they follow that which is not entirely clear thereof, seeking a fitna, seeking trials, and seeking for its hidden meanings, but none knows its hidden meanings except Allah. And those who are firmly grounded in knowledge say, we believe in it, the whole of it, uh, the clear and unclear or ambiguous verses, are from our Lord, and none receive admonition except men of understanding. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they say, رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِدْ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ لَتَدَيْتَنَا وَحَبْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُونْكُ رَحْمَةً إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَحَابِ Our Lord, let, us, let not our hearts deviate from the truth after you have guided us and grant us mercy from you. Truly you are the bestower. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam read this verse. And then he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and you'll find this hadith in... In Sahih Muslim, in the Book of Knowledge, the Prophet ﷺ said after re reading this uh, ayat, then he said, if you see those who follow those verses which are not entirely clear from it, from the book, the Qur'an, then those are the ones who Allah mentioned and warned against them. Letting us know, Allah, the creator of the heavens and earth, Warned us. Read the verse in Surah uh, in Ali Imran. This is verse uh, verse seven in Ali Imran, where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Who are the anzal alayk al kitab min hu ayat al muhkamat al huna um al kitab?" Read that verse in, in in your in in English and understand it. Just very clear in the verse, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala lets us know that there are those people who have a sickness and deviation in their heart. And they follow those verses and those things in the Sharia which are not entirely clear. Or that might have more than one meaning, seeking a hidden meaning. Allah said this. They seek this hidden meaning. And no one knows this meaning except Allah. Well, I ya la muna illa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for yet to be una man to shaba bin who would tigal fitna with tigal ta'wili. وَمَا يَعْلَمُ تَعْوِيلَهُ إِلَى اللَّهُ And no one knows their hidden meanings except Allah. Isn't that sufficient? Allah said that. So whenever you hear someone saying, talking about secret meanings, then run. I say run the opposite direction. No matter what they call themselves, no matter how they, the people praise them and, and say they're, they're a scholar, they're a marid, they're a Sufi sheikh, they're a Sufi alam, they're this, they're that. Anytime they say that they know hidden meanings, Run. Run as if you were running from the Dajjal himself. Because the Prophet Muhammad wasallam said that there would be people, du'at ala abwaab jahannam there would be people who call to the, hell, to the gates of the hellfire. They're on the different paths. And then uh, the Prophet wasallam drew lines in the sand. And he, he said that, have a sirat mustaqim. He said that that is the straight path, meaning the straight one, that the straight line that was straight. Then he drove... Uh, drew uh, lines on the side of it. He said, Hada hi subul, ala kulu subil, uh, fihi shaytano, kama kala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa He said, then those are the various paths. And at every end of each one of those paths is a devil that calls you. So look to guidance. And I, I promise you, and I swear by Allah, and and I ask that Allah blesses this to be sincerity for his sake. I don't like to talk about anyone, but it is an obligation to speak about the dangers of those people who call to other than the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam and speculate in the religion. And may Allah protect us from them. Here's a statement of one of the Salaf of this Ummah, Qala Ayyub Sakhtiani rahimahullah ta'ala. He said, La a'lam al yawm ahad min ahl al ahwa yukhasim illa bi mutashabi. He said, I don't know of a people, and this was, you know, in the third or fourth century. He said, I don't know of a person during this time from the people of desires, meaning of innovation, who innovate in the religion, who uh, seek controversy, except that they do it with the, those things which are unclear. So when we read those ahadith about prophetic prophecy about the Dajjal and stuff, 
we only know what the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, described. But we don't infer. See, that it means a UN. It means a television. It means uh, when people do this. It means when the dollar has this sign. The pyramid and the eye and the, and the Illuminati and the world, New World Order. No. You cannot speculate that. Leave that away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion. Practice the religion. Understand the religion in a manner that was practiced and you'll be safe. But when you follow those other paths... You ask for trouble and misguidance, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself with the shaitan.